Hello, welcome to Decaf Math if you are new here, and welcome back if you are returning. Today I wanted to help you fall asleep, just fall asleep, or at the very least, hopefully you can relax, relax, relax. So of course, it's Decaf Math. So we will be doing some math and I thought that we could talk about the imaginary number I and I has the value the square root of negative 1 so if you're already getting sleepy don't fight it this is the one takeaway I is the square root of negative 1, okay? So at this point, you can just fall asleep. But I thought that we could kind of play around and explore the cyclical, the cyclical, 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 uh, nature of exponents of I, kind of like So that's what we're going to do today. I is kind of like our unit, like a base case for complex numbers. So if you notice here, uh, by the time you learn about I, you probably already know about square roots and you've worked with square roots and algebra, right? Um, and we talk about the square root of zero, which is zero, but then square root of positive, or rather non-negative numbers, right? So we could do the square root of 36, for instance. You probably already know, if I write it directly like this, it is just six. And you can kind of think to yourself, one number times itself gives me 36. And then with this without a negative there, we know it's just the positive one. So 6 squared, 6 times 6, gives me 36. It's like the opposite of taking a square, right? But there is like a subtle, you know, notation thing. If I wrote, if I were to try to solve x squared equals 9, for instance, this is a slightly different question. It's what number squared gives me 9? So if I were to solve for x, a lot of people think that the square root and squared kind of cancel each other, and they do, kind of. You just have to be careful, because in this case, to solve it, I have x equals plus or minus the square root of 9, which is plus or minus 3. So that weird wonky notation is, that means that x equals 3 or x equals negative 3, okay? So we have two solutions because if you think about it, negative 3 in parentheses squared is negative 3 times negative 3, which is positive 9. So we would have two solutions here. Whereas if I just directly wrote the square root of 36, that's just 6, okay? Anyways, that's off on a tangent. <laughs> but when we want to solve what squared equals a negative number, we can start using i. And the reason that this is kind of cool to think about complex numbers in general is because if you've worked with... Um, the quadratic equation, for instance, solving quadratics with negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. That stuff um, inside, like under the square root part, is called the discriminant. And the discriminant test tells us how many real solutions to the quadratic we have. So we can just do the b squared minus 4ac and look at the sign of that value. So usually if that's positive, 
it means that we have two real solutions. If it's exactly zero, we have one real solution. And then usually we'll say, oh, if there is, if it's less than zero, we have no real solutions, which is true. But then beyond that, if we can actually learn about complex numbers, we can actually figure out complex roots, so not just real roots. So if you're interested in how like the real numbers and rational numbers, like all the classification of numbers, um, my friend over at Let's Find Out ASMR actually recently made a video on just like, it was really cool, it was a cool visualization for, you know, whole numbers, natural numbers, integers, that kind of stuff, and he you know, recently made a video on that. So I highly recommend if you don't already know him, a lot of, uh, a lot of my subscribers so far do, but he has a really great channel and uh, he had a really great video recently about that. So I'll link, I'll link his channel down below in case you're interested. Um, but complex numbers is like even beyond the real numbers. And so um, the cyclical nature, the cyclical nature, comes from finding exponents of i. And I've seen problems like this on the math SAT subject test. And, um, you know, and oftentimes they're just like uh, random questions on like different math competitions and stuff like that if you're into it. <laughs> but uh, this is pretty uh, pretty cool to just kind of take your time to think about it. and since it's a little more tedious I thought hey sleepy map. I'll do all the work. You can just sit back So for I being the square root of negative one The reason I call this by the way the reason I call this like the unit case is because complex numbers in general Have the form a plus B I and we'll work with this more for sure I believe usually this is introduced in either like advanced algebra or pre-calculus um, but really a and b are real numbers and so because we have this i part this the b i is the imaginary part and a is the real part so something like you know 5 minus 3i that's a complex number and it has both a real part and an imaginary part so I is sort of like my unit case. So we'll work with this more coming up for sure, of course. But one thing that's just really neat about this is if I is the square root of negative one, then we know that I squared is I times I, which is um, negative one. Okay. And usually that's actually the definition and we can therefore say, okay, I is the square root of negative one. So it's different technically, you know, it, you know that x squared, if you were to try to solve x squared equals negative one, like we were just doing with x squared equals nine, um, this is one of the solutions, but you know that negative I is also a solution and that's okay. But in this case, we can write i squared equals negative 1, okay? So, just memorize that one. Anytime you see i squared, you have negative 1. It's nice, it gets rid of the square root, and that's it, okay? Um, and so then, i cubed is... And this is where you can have to remember your exponent rules, if you do. Uh, if you don't, I will write it right now. <laughs> i cubed is actually i squared times i because i is, you know, i to the 1. That's the same thing. Anything to the power of 1 is itself. And the reason I can break it up like this is because um, this is sort of the general rule is a to the x times a to the y equals a to the x plus y. Um, where a is just a base, any base as long as it's the same. So you just keep that base and you raise it to the power of the two exponents added together. So in this case, i cubed is i to the two times i to the one, because two plus one is 
um, three. So that's why. Uh, and so we already know that i squared is negative one. And i to the one is just i. So you can write negative square root of negative one, but the cool part is just the fact that this is negative i. So you can just write it like that. i cubed is negative i. And I promise that there's a point to this. For now, I'm just going to keep track of what we're doing. So we have i, which I'm just going to circle. I'll tell you why in a second. We have i squared is negative 1. And then we have i cubed is negative i. Okay. And then we have i to the fourth. i to the fourth is, so you can take one less, so i cubed times i, or i to the one, right? Because i is just i to the one, and three plus one is four. So you just take the one before it and multiply by i. So we have i cubed we know is negative i. So we just bring that down, right? We just did that. So negative i times i. But then i times i is i squared. So this is negative i squared. But what is i squared? i squared is negative 1. So that's negative of negative 1, which is positive 1. Okay, and I have a point to this, but wasn't this just cool already? Just multiply the previous one by i, and you can just use what we've already found so far to get 1. So then what is i to the 5th? i to the 5th... Can you see that? I hope so. i to the 5th is i to the 4th times one more i, right? But then i to the 4th, we just got, i to the 4th is 1. So we have 1 times i, which is i. So i to the 5th is i. So then we just repeat the cycle again, right? So we got i to the 1 is just i, which is my square root of negative 1 i squared, oops, let me just do this in a different color, I think it'll be neater that way, and it'll just be more apparent what this pattern is. So i squared is negative 1, i cubed is negative i, i to the fourth is 1, and then i to the fifth goes back to i. Okay, so this is kind of like i to the 1, if you want to think of it like that. Oops. <laughs> i to the 1, right? Or just regular i. I hope you can see that looking back. I hope that's going to make sense. But we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then i to the 5th repeats back to i to the 1. So, the reason I point that out is because then... We have i to the 6th, so i to the 6th is i squared, because i to the 6th would be um, i to the 5th times another i, which is i times i. <laughs> and if your eyes are closed, speaking of i, if your <laughs> okay, that was so bad, but if your eyes are closed, um, it just sounds like I'm saying a whole bunch of i and i squared and i cubed or whatever. But if you are following along with this, you'll see that we've gone back through the circle. So essentially, when you want to find something like i to the, you know, 102, which we can actually do some fun problems like this at some point. If not, I'll try and kind of mention this now. But i to the something like this. I've seen this as like a pattern recognition sort of challenge problem, but really for this, anytime you have i squared, 
you have a negative 1. Okay, so you can use your exponent rules. I guess this will be a challenge question. If you're still awake right now, feel free to give this a try and let me know what you get for this. So, you know that the exponents are going to be either i, negative 1, negative i, or 1. And then it repeats itself, right? So these are actually the only four values, um, just in general, like the only four values that you will get for i to the power of something. So let me know what you think for i to the 102 and i for the 103 to the 103rd power. And this will just be using um, either exponent rules or just pattern recognition here. If you can see, just pay attention to 1, 2, 3, 4. But my hint here will be basically every fourth, every power of 4 that you can get gives you 1, or every power of 2 gives you negative 1. So whatever you're comfortable with here, but um, I like to try to pull out the ones and the negative ones because they're just easier to work with um, because one to the power of anything is still one. Um, but really you can just say, okay, um, so it goes one, two, three, four, and then five goes back to one. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And, uh, if that makes sense, like every, uh, so I did the fifth goes back to I. So I did the sixth goes back to I squared, which is negative one, right? So that's the cyclical. Um, <laughs> so I hope that you are asleep by now. I hope you understand what I mean by cyclical. Like, maybe I should write out what more, like, i to the sixth is then i to the fifth times i, but we just said that, I hope you can see this, but, um, we just said that i to the fifth is i, so that's i times i which is i squared, which is negative 1. So I'm going to go i, negative 1, negative i, 1, and then i, negative 1, and then i to the 7th would be uh, negative i. So I'm just going to be scribbling it at this point, but <laughs> negative i, and i to the 8th is the same as negative i times i, which is back to 1. So 5, 6, 7, 8 also goes, so 1, 2, 3, 4 goes i, negative 1, negative i, 1. 5, 6, 7, 8 goes i, negative 1, negative i, 1. And then etc, etc. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I hope that this was somewhat interesting and clear enough, at least for now. Play around with this um, on your own if you're interested, and we can definitely come back and revisit this a bit. Maybe I can pull out a specific challenge problem, um, and then we will use this for foundations for complex numbers. Okay, thank you so much for hanging out with me. And I hope that you are very, very relaxed at this point, uh, if not already asleep. And uh, we will play around more with this. And let me know if you have any topics that you would like um, or think are good for sleepy math. Um, most of my videos I make intentionally soft-spoken and more or less monotone <laughs> um, for relaxation purposes and just kind of low-key math review, but these videos are more, even more intentionally sleepy, and so I hope you've been enjoying them. I think it's a series I will keep playing around with and hopefully continue, um, and I will also continue my more like tutorial style. So, I hope that 
you've been enjoying and so if you have any particularly sleep inducing math ideas let me know and I will see you around soon um, please share this with anyone that you think will enjoy it and um, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more soft spoken math sleepy or otherwise okay good night and sweet dreams and we will revisit imaginary 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 and complex numbers very soon bye bye